All right. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Good morning. I say good morning because it's morning for me. But good afternoon, good day, good night, good evening. Uh, there's so many people from so many different places. I am happy to see all of you. Happy to see you. Good morning. Good morning to Nerdy Nerd. How are... How is everyone doing? How's everybody hanging up? <laughs> it's... Uh, what is it today? It's Wednesday? Let me... There we go. Hype! Hype! Wednesday hype. Indeed. How's everybody doing? What a fool! <laughs> it is I. Hello. How's everybody doing? I'm in my box. I'm here. I'm uh, ready for coding. Ready for talking about things. <laughs> Everything will be fine. Uh, yeah, you know, hype. Welcome, Solar. Godot box. Yes, I should have written Godot on the box. It's a miss opportunity, but. How much how much did it cost to ship your box to the new to a new channel? It's pretty expensive, actually. Um it's pretty expensive. From from Canada, it's um uh, it's horrible. The the rates are not bad, not good. Very, very bad. Hello Tom! Welcome! How are you doing? It's nice to see some Familiar faces over here. Uh, yeah. Let me just settle in slowly. We do have like a couple of things here. Like we have my standard overlay that you guys might have noticed. Um, it's it's kind of obli obvious, <laughs> but yes. We do have uh, some stuff like that. I, all of this is made in Godot. Um, it's something that I made for project sake to be able to understand a little bit more about Godot and have fun with the community at the same time. <clears throat> Darn it, you're smarter than Tuner the Nerd. You disable all the channel point redeem. Yes, yes, I thought about that. I thought about that, Temptic. I also added other little feature to the overlay so that we can test thing and change stuff. So I, I have the possibility, if you guys are too bad, I have the possibility of, uh, no, why did it not work? Oh no, I crashed everything. That's not good. Hmm. Hmm. That's not good. <laughs> That's the joy of going live. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this is not what's supposed to happen. Uh, why is this not working? What do you mean? That was working yesterday when I tested it. Oh my god, no. <laughs> oh no. Nothing is working. Um, everything is fine. It's the box! Yes. Hello. Imagine trusting your own community not to troll you. My fish was too tasty. Yes. Imagine trusting your own mod not to use your command secretly. So I'm supposed to have a command right now to kill all messages. But for some reason, it's not working. Uh, Oh, I know why. This is bad. Oh, 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 oh. Just give me a sec. I'm gonna... Oh my god. Uh... Uh... <laughs> uh... Can I fix that quickly? Sorry about this. I just need to do something really really quickly uh and hopefully it will fix some stuff you, you know like it that's part of a developer life to just like 
fix things live like this. Um, it's 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 pretty normal. Uh, so we're we're just gonna do this. You know, it's 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 fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, like this. Oh, well, it's not working. Well, I guess I will just hope that everything will be fine and that uh, we won't. Oh my God, no. Sorry, okay, I'm back. Oh my God, this was uh, interesting. <laughs> Real men only test in production. Yes, that's exactly what happened right now. Uh, I was expecting a um, thing to work, but apparently I didn't test it properly. Uh, and now I can't use it. So, are you nervous, Foolbox? I am. I am. We're here, we're talking about stuff, and uh, everything is crashing. But that is just the nature of things. So, it's fine. It's fine. We're gonna be okay. Foolbox is working for Godot now. Rip Dream Game. What do you mean? The, the game is still going. But yeah, uh, I'm Foolbox. For those that don't know me, uh, I make like overlay shenanigans with Godot, and I also work on a game that I'm working on for a little bit that uh, is kind of like a puzzle game. Uh, and today we're gonna be trying to like plan a little bit for the next fest that I want to participate into uh, in October. So that's gonna be mainly what we do today. We're gonna be just doing some planning. If you have questions about anything, like the how it works for the overlay, how certain of the things are done, all of this kind of stuff, uh, I'll be happy to answer any of your question talk about some stuff, how we do things, uh, how some of the system are built. If you have like suggestion of how things should be done. Wow, that's a big one, Rart. Nice. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, we're gonna go ahead and work on things and see how things happen. Uh, I'm not in my standard setup. Just because uh, I needed to have like a different thing to read my chat and other things like that. It's kind of complicated. Uh, so it will take a little bit of getting used to for me, but we should we should be good. We should be good. Um, for now, I believe I will leave the messages on here. Uh, and we're gonna go go to Godo. You know, and uh, the message will still be here. I had a, I had implemented a kill switch for the messages just in case something weird happened. But uh, it seems like it doesn't work, and I'm a little sad about that. So what I'm gonna do instead, unfortunately, is to disable them because I don't want to. <laughs> risk anything you guys uh, I hope that you understand should be should be fine should be fine all right here we go let me catch up on chat a little bit uh, take note that we need to optimize fools overlay yes we need to change some stuff there are some things that I haven't done properly I it's it's very basic. I put the messages in a list, uh, well, in an array, and the messages that go out of the screen delete themselves. But I also want to be able to delete them myself with a button. But when they delete themselves, I didn't remove them from the array. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty basic thing but yeah it happens it happens when you work quickly on stuff 
It happens. <laughs> that is a typical coding stream. Yes. Yes. Coding stream are always like that. Hello, Fullorama! Hello, Weasel! How you doing? Wouldn't be a fool if you tested stuff beforehand. Yes, I know. I'm a fool. I do everything foolishly. Um, I try to push people to do things foolishly, too. Because it doesn't matter. That's kind of like one of my idea or like one of my rule in coding and in life in general is that you will start being a fool anyway. So just give it a shot, you know, try. You're gonna look foolish anyway. And once you get past that point and you understand that you're foolish and that everyone is foolish, then it becomes easier to ask questions, to just like, you know, to just like accept that it's, it's not gonna work on the first try. And then you continue and then you become a better fool and, but you're still a fool <laughs> and then you continue like that. It's fun. It's a nice way to think about things, I think. So if you want to be a fool, you can join me on my adventures. All right. Uh, nice line fool box. See something bad about good old. I'm never going to do that. Right. <laughs> Is this your first Godot takeover? About time. Yes, it is the first one. Hello, Valkok. Welcome in. How are you doing? Uh, full box. Oh my god. Yes. How are you doing, Flavius? Welcome in. It's, le it's a little bit less interactive with other things, but for everyone that chat, there's going to be like a little ball that will pop out of the box. And all of them right now are randomized. Uh, but some people that normally hang out on my stream will have their ball that they normally have, which is kind of cool. Um, I have this thing on my own stream where people can ask to have redeems for specific ball. And there is a lot of balls that have been drawn with like a lot of different visuals people can ask basically whatever they want um, and yeah it's a little thing that I have for fun on my own stream uh, it's a little kind of like side project and uh, it's pretty fun so yeah um message now turned off yes sorry what are you doing? RTR Tem. Um, today we're going to be working on my project, which is a puzzle game that I've been working on for about seven or eight months now, something like that. Um, I went through the process of making this game during a game jam, and then the reception was pretty good. So I decided to continue working on it. I'm just going to show the game real quick so that people can can see it. Uh, I'm going to cut the music here because I don't always like the music when I'm working. Uh, but yeah, it's a little puzzle game in which you have like different shapes. So different sizes of shape like this little square here. And you need to draw and drag uh, conveyor belt to bring it to the goal. So there's like multiple level in there in which you need to just like at first bring the thing at the right places and then eventually you get like different kind of machine that help you um, transform those block into different different things, different uh, blocks basically. So the more you play you get like something like this uh, splitter, which you can... Oh yeah, there's also command like that. So black holes still work. <laughs> uh, but you get like different uh, machine, like this uh, splitter, and then you get like increasingly complex levels in which you can also do uh, squishers like this. So you need to like transform this block with some form of squisher. Uh, and then you can have like stackers and all those kind of things. Is it something that interests you? The project right now 
if I do this, yes. Uh, it's available as a demo on Steam. Uh, and that's what we're going to be working on. The demo has like a pretty good, uh, how do you say that? Number of people trying it out and playing it. Uh, and I want to make sure that the demo for next fest in October is going to be interesting enough for people to talk about it or like to share, uh, to share like levels of it or things like that. So I want to be, I want to be sure that people are interested by that. Uh, I can't redeem special balls. <laughs> it's, it's, I remove everything, right? I'm not foolish. I'm serious. Uh, can't have it critique good though. <laughs> uh, that's fun. Yes. I want a gut. Uh, uh, there are Unity and Jinball. Yes. Because I don't really. Personally, I don't really believe in the engine war. <laughs> For me, it's more about making games, right? I'm, uh, I used to be a Unity dev. Uh, that's where I started my journey. And I still use Unity sometime for some project. Um, I'm actually going to start uh, giving a class soon that will be a initiation to C Sharp in Unity. So for me, it's not like it's a tool, right? Like the important part for me is to make games. The engine that you decide to make a game for me doesn't really matter that much. As long as you make something that you think is cool and that people will enjoy, I think you're doing great. So, yeah, that's that's the reason why we do have. Do can I do this? We do have this. Whoa, so many emotes. What's happening? We have this and this that can. There are little emotes on my channel that are pretty cute for people to use. All right, let's see. There's a Unity engine ball. Yes, there is, but its owner hasn't popped it in yet. <laughs> it's never going to pop in. Like if Unity shows up in my stream, that would be a little bit weird. Uh, very creative idea of a game full box. Thank you. Balls got nerfed. Uh, he's totally... <laughs> Come on, Rart. I was the only ball not to be... Oh yeah, for the black hole. I'm, I'm just gonna catch up on ch chat real quick and then we're gonna start working. Uh, this game is awesome. Thank you, Valkak. I really appreciate that. Um, if you guys tried the demo and you like it, just like let me know. Give me feedback if you have any. I like to work with the community to like bring new idea together for the thing. So let's let's continue doing that. And I'm always always looking for feedback and for ideas for the game. Played the demo the other day live on stream, and I've been playing it since. Oh, you haven't finished it, Judson? Judson was having a little bit of a problem with the last level. So if you can play the demo and finish the last level of the demo, which is level 24, then that means that officially you are smarter than Judson. So, you know, I still need to download Trevron. Ah, no farming for super special redeem. No, not today, Temptic, not today. Uh, I also taught Unity VR for two years while making smaller game with Godot at the same time. Oh, that's pretty cool, Weasel. Wait a minute, your moderator on Godot official? Uh, Temptic is, apparently, now. Uh, I thought someone requested the Unity ball since most of them are pre-user. Yeah, I would, uh, the would you ball is looking, oh, that's your ball, <laughs> Dominic. Welcome in, by the way. Uh, everyone struggle with level 24. Yes. Yes. I'm proud of my 10 minute speed run. Yes. Also, if you can speed run it and do better than Temptic, you're doing better than Temptic. <laughs> so yeah. Um, one of the thing we're going to be working on today, the main part actually, uh, is going to be planning 
planning for like all of the things we want to be sure that we put in the demo for next fest or the all the thing that we want to change and get better so i do have like a little bit of a kanban board that i want to go through and decide on the task uh, and a lot of them are going to be geared toward the level editor so i do have a level editor that i want to be sure that works in a manner that's like interesting and that maybe i can have the level be exported. I'm still thinking about how I want to do some of these things uh, because I'm not sure yet exactly how it's going to work. Um, but yeah, we're going to be working on that. Uh, right now, the level editor kind of like you can make things and you can test them, but I need to change some of the way the level is created some of the way um, things are selected or confirm. Um, there's a lot of work to do here. So we're gonna kind of like try to like separate things into task on what needs to be done so that people can correctly make level if they want to and share them with their friends. And I still need to think about how I want the levels to be shared which is like a big question especially for the demo because i want people to be able to share them but maybe not through like steam because that would make it too easy and then people would just share level and play each other level and then not buy the game right so i do need to think about that a little bit like how do i limit the number of level that people make or how do I limit the transition or the sharing of the levels. So that's something that I need to think about and put into place. Uh, you missed my first hey, but we go, we good. That's my ball. There you go. I don't have to prove you anything, bro. <laughs> uh, Will you plan on providing the same course or learning experience with C Sharp on Godot? I did think about it. Um, the the job I got for teaching that Unity class is is like somewhere here where I live in an actual like video game school. And I was thinking that like since I'm making the class, because that's how most of those classes work anyway. Um, I was thinking that maybe I could make a Godot C Sharp equivalent at the same time um, or like in parallel maybe or after when the whole thing is done I can transfer it. Um, so yeah, this it's something that's on my mind. I don't know yet how it's gonna go, Valkok, but um, I'm thinking about it. We'll see, we'll see how if it happens or not and how it happens. So. Yeah, there's not much support material for Godot plus C Sharp, only G GDS. Yeah, okay. That's something I'll think about then. I'm not in C Sharp yet in uh, Godot because I do like to be able to do uh, web builds. So I haven't dipped my toe yet, but I do know C Sharp and it's, I miss it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, is it Turing Complete, the game that I'm making? Uh, what does it, what does Turing Complete mean? <laughs> uh, hello, Yag, hello, how you doing? Welcome in. Could you move your head half out of the screen like it's usually on your stream really quickly, please? What? I do, I do have the possibility of moving myself around if anything happen. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mention this, but this car can <laughs> move around. Uh, this is more silly than anything. Um, and I can like, uh, I could point at things if we need to. Um, we'll see if it's useful for anything, but it's probably not going to be. 
So for now, I'm just going to be sitting here. Uh, and we're not going to do backflips or anything. But, uh, yeah. I used to watch Fullbox Twitch channel, but he's not live today, so I'm here. <laughs> Welcome, Vizio. How are you doing? Uh, allow saving only in full version. Yes, that's a good point. But I do want people to share some of the levels, right? Because the idea with Nextfest is that if people can make a level and then share it to a friend that might not have played the game, there is kind of like a possibility for organic discovery there. So... I feel like if I don't allow that, I'm kind of like shooting myself in the foot. Uh, like if you just can make level, but then you test it yourself and there's no community aspect to it, it's not going to be as interesting. So that's why I'm like not sure exactly how I want to plan this. And it's good that you guys are here because I'm sure you guys have a ton of idea. So we can actually do a little bit of brainstorming on stuff like that. Uh, weird, I wonder where he is. Du -du -du -du. Find him soon. I'll only enable Steamworks for the bot game. Yes, that might have that might be what I end up doing. I was thinking I don't know if it's gonna be possible for me to make it so that the level can be exported into a string, maybe? And then you can copy that string and paste it to test the level from anywhere. Like somebody else that has the game or the demo could test with just the string. I don't know how long that string would be. Uh, I've been testing stuff out a little bit for reducing the size of my level when they're saved and stuff like that. So I think that could be a way that's interesting because like if it's out of the game, people will might still be able to like share some of the ideas and some of the level that they made, but it's going to be like a, a step further that makes it so that it's not going to be easy for them completely to do it. So I was thinking that that could be a nice trade off. And then when the full game release, there could be like full Steam Orb support. So, so we're Steam Workshop support. So we'll we'll see. I I don't know if anyone here has experience releasing like games that have like level editor in them and have like tips and tricks or ideas, but yeah. Don't know Temptic, but sure and sticking holiday without thinking of us. What? Why do you use GD script since you are publishing it? on stream on steam you just had no idea back then uh i want to still be able to push it on itch as a web build so that there is traffic from the demo on itch to be able to reach uh my steam page right so right now if i look here doo -doo -doo, i do have the demo available right here on itch and it does get traffic so i assume that there's a lot of people or a certain number of people that play the game on itch they find it nice they click on steam oh my god i'm frozen what's happening okay i'm back <laughs> uh i assume that a lot of people are uh, interested or people that play the game there's a wish list on Steam button so when you click this you get to the wish list on Steam and then you can wish list it here um, I actually don't have stats on how many people come from here because I didn't do the correct links and stuff like that I should do it uh, I'm just kind of lazy about it so <laughs> don't don't ask. But that's the main reason why I'm still doing it in GD Script. It's for the capability of still being able to have the web build. Um, I do believe that having something where your player can find your game and play it right away is good. 
you know like if you have like small um install kits if you have like like small download on your itch page i think people like that and they will start playing and you'll have like more visibility on on things you know so for me this is kind of important to have that um especially for a small indie person like me that's just starting um i can't expect to have like a lot of visibility on steam so the more visibility i can get the better so that i start having more follower having like visibility people following me on steam on itch on different platform and then moving forward it's kind of like part of my strategy basically uh when you started can you do a flip yes i can do a flip i can flip around we haven't i still i'm still so but yeah, I can flip like this. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's get back here. Uh, I'm still, I'm so late on chat, I think. Or maybe not. Uh, how do you make the task here? Those tasks? This is a plugin that I use for Godot. Uh, it is called task Kanban task. And this is what I use to like keep track of everything that I need to do uh, in the project. It's per project. I kind of like this because I also have my overlay, for example, that's right here, that I have task for specifically for the overlay, right? So when we talk about that or talk about things that need to be added when I'm on stream with people, I add them in here. And then I know what I need to work on when I have time. So I, I kind of like that. Having everything like at the same place. For me, it's uh, it's very, very useful. Uh, limit level size to four by four. Oh, that's kind of an interesting one, Cubus. I think that's kind of interesting. Like if I could make it so that you can only make very small level People could still make level, but they would be pretty small. And they could still use Steamwork, but, or Steam Workshop, but only for, I kind of like this idea. I'm going to note it. Uh, limit, limit the size of the board. Yeah, I think that's a cool one. Uh, do you really need to limit a player for level upload? Um, the question is more like, I don't want to limit them for the full game, right? But I want to limit them for the demo. Because if they can just upload as many level as they want on the demo and play all the level that other people have made, then... I can't sell the game anymore, right? Because people will just be playing the levels that other people made. So like the level that I made, maybe somebody else will make it and then I don't have a reason to sell the game anymore. So that's more my reasoning there. Um, I want to be able to <laughs> still make a little bit of money from this game that I've worked for so long on so this is where the strategy is is coming from basically uh the thinking is that if people can just freely share level for from the demo there's not a lot of incentive to get the full game exactly fully sky how are you doing welcome in happy to have you hello artist synth how are you doing uh captain onessa welcome pigorly welcome Spoo stream, welcome. Uh, <laughs> redeem custom ball for Yag. We're not in this kind of stream, uh, Sky. I'm sorry. So actually made this stream overlay with ball in Godot. Yes, all of this is made in Godot. Uh, there is this little car that is like a physics object 
Uh, all the balls are also little physics objects that can move. I can wrap around and move in this little car. I can do flips. Uh, and the camera is actually brought in from an application that I found on the internet. Um, and it, it's put like on a, a texture. So I'm actually in Godot right now. My camera is in Godot. I used before to put it in OBS and have like, um, yes, the black holes still work too. Um, uh, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Uh, I used to have it in OBS and with like WebSocket, I would move my camera on OBS, but that proved to be problematic because I wanted to be able to do things like this. This is fine. And to be able to do something like this, I wanted, I needed to be able to do, put something behind me on the camera, which is not possible if I used OBS. So this is one of the reasons why I decided to move and change the way I was doing thing. So yeah. Is your webcam cart app available to purchase as an editable Godot project? Um, not yet. Uh, Pendleton Ward but I'm thinking about it. Um, I don't know if I would make it purchasable or just free <laughs> for the community or uh, I don't know, like with subscription or something. I don't know. Uh, but is it is this something that would interest you or just like knowing how it works and stuff like that? Uh, doesn't need to be exactly four by four, but perhaps only use 16 or 12 tiles max. So you can also moderate Steam Workshop and delete those. Yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting idea, Cubus. Um, having like a limit on the number of machine or the number of tile could be interesting for making sure that people don't create things that are too intense in the demo. And maybe then limiting them to having like, I don't know. Ah, oh, raid. Oh no, we're going to have so much ball. What? <laughs> Who is this fool? Hello. Who is this Minecraft streamer? I am indeed a Minecraft streamer. <laughs> Welcome in, Beegs. How you doing? Welcome in, Raider. We're going to be talking about next fest. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I'd buy it yet. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I'm a raider now. Everybody is a raider. Hi, oldie. Hi, young lady. <laughs> Hello. Hi, fool. Hope you're doing good. Welcome in, Foxen. Welcome in, Nurkmine. How's everybody doing? Welcome in. Ah, uh, but yeah. Hello, Foolbox. Hello, Robotech. How you doing? So many nice people joining in. So many nice people. Uh, uh, let's see. How was your stream, Biggs? Let me see if I can catch up. So they can also moderate Steam. Uh, look at those willy. Yes. Show off that you can draw your name on the overlay. Yes, I do have like other stuff in the overlay that I might use for explaining things. And it should be interesting. Uh, or you only get to build with the limited block that are unlocked in the demo. That's also a good idea, Cubus. I think I will note all of these idea. Limit, limit blocks. I have too many things to write and you guys are talking at the same time. Uh, limit tiles. So many things. Uh, he's a fool. He's a fool. He's a fool box. Yes, I, uh, how you doing? Welcome in. Uh, right now is a fool box. I'm a box full of things, full of balls. So yeah, there we go. 
I like when the ball just like go everywhere. It's like one of the things I like, you know. Oh, I can also do this for people that are interested. I can flip gravity, but I know some people don't like it. So for today, we're, we're just going to stay like right side up because it's less, uh, <laughs> it's less dizzying. Good, thanks. Actually got a lot done today, despite chat best effort. How does it feel being on the official face of Godot? Um, it feels pretty similar than normal. <laughs> chat is the same, things are the same, you know. Why note, you have task manager. That's true. Um, but for now, I don't know how those will translate into task yet limiting those things for me like just writing like limit the machine is not necessarily a task like i need to think about what kind of system i need to be able to limit the task and then then it will become a task right so that's why i just noted it on the side to be able to like add it, it through my things basically it was fun Biggs just played minecraft in <laughs> two and it was wow Interesting. Singing Baby Shark? Wow. <laughs> fully, fully loves to play with his ball. There's so many balls here. Look at them. Who wouldn't like that? Uh, amazed no one clipped that, by the way. Uh, you should get a safety helmet when you start speeding. <laughs> yes. I should, like, just have a... I do have a helmet for my bike. Maybe I should go get it and just wear it when I'm moving around. What is this Kanban board? It is a plugin for Godot. Welcome in, Go Uh But it's a plugin that I use. It's called Kanban Task. And uh, it is very useful for, you know, for just a... Uh, oh, there's a... I'm drawing here. Uh, for just like organizing your thing, which we're gonna start doing very shortly. <laughs> Woohoo! Yo, what up, Nano? Welcome in. Is Task a plugin or new engine feature? It is a plugin. It is a plugin. I like balls. Yes. Welcome in, Alien. There's a lot of balls now. Yes. I don't know how many people will chat and how many balls will show up. But uh, if there's anything or if there's a problem, I can always delete some and then it should be fine. Also, there's a black hole. So watch out. Watch your balls. Watch out. Flood. Uh, I have a task next to your work uh, without having to need to tab to Jira or Trello. Yes, it is very nice. I really like it. The only thing I don't like with this idea is that sometime I do need to do like marketing task task, right? So like if I have a task that's a marketing task that's outside of Godot, like something like I need to go on social media, post, I need to uh, talk with some like influencer, I need to like do those kind of things. I still want to be able to track those. What happened? Okay, this was uh, loading weirdly on my side. Um, I still want to be able to like track those tasks. Um, I would like to have those outside of Godot. So I'm still trying to see like what is possible to do there. Would be nice if it exported to data to JSON or something. It might be saving to JSON. So you might have the possibility of just like reading from it and putting it elsewhere. Um, I'm not really familiar completely with this plugin. I just started using it. Uh, well, I started using it like six months ago, but I just use it very basically. I, I use colors, I do my things, and that's basically it. Like, I don't know further than that. Uh, is it still the case that longer message because your ball to bounce higher so that if you... Uh, yes. It is, but I limited the amount so that it doesn't go crazy. Because uh, it was kind of like 
intense, a little bit intense. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, the idea now is that we have, we have, how much time do we have? That's the big question. Cause right now we're Wednesday the 28th, right? And next fest is gonna be, I believe, on October 14th. So we do have like a month, a month and a half, something like that. Let me just confirm when October next fest is gonna be. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, it's in October 14th. So that leaves us one, two, three, four, five, six, six weeks, right? So I do need to put an amount of work that seems reasonable for six weeks. So that's not always easy, but we're going to try to do our best. I did do a lot of work to change some of the stuff on the system and everything. Um, but there is still a lot of polishing that I need to do. And it's not polishing that people can see. It's polishing that's more in the way you play and in the little features that are would be nice to have. So I want to try to like work on this slowly and be sure that all of that is available and ready correctly for the demo. Uh, you got a readable file in the root folder of the project, so a little converter could be enough, I think. Ooh. You mean this file? I think it's here, right? Somewhere here, I believe. Uh, hey, it's one of my other favorite streamer taking over the Godot channel. Welcome in, Goob. How you doing? Welcome in. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you, Goobs. Goobs. I use template in Obsidian and can tie it into pretty much anything to import and export. Interesting. I tried to use Obsidian and it's it's like not for me. I don't I don't really like it, to be honest. Um, what I started using is just Figma. So I started using Figma and putting like pictures and screenshots. Um, and I, I like this better for me, my brain works better with like images than with text. So obsidian is like horrible for me. Um, so, you know, like I did a, a whole, uh, thing here where we went, I went to an event to present the game to like Comic-Con in Montreal. And we, we did like a post mortem completely, completely on stream. Uh, and it was very interesting to talk about these kind of stuff. This is where the picture come from, you know, like I like to be able to like move around like that and just like show things and do all of this. Uh, you know, that's just like a personal preference. Uh, I see you're on the big channel now. Fuff, welcome. How you doing? Ah, obsidian for the win. Figma, bah. No, I should not do this here. <laughs> what? Obsidian doesn't support image. It does, but not moving around like this. Yeah, it's not exactly the same thing. I do like this because it becomes kind of like more of a brain image scatter thing. Um, I'm even planning for that class that I'm giving to have like a Figma that the student can come and see like some of the screenshots. So like as I will teach, I will take screenshot and put them in the Figma and it's going to be separated per class. And then the kids will just be able to come and look at the Figma and see what was discussed on that class and how do you do this and how do you do that? For me, it's just easier. So I want to give that, uh, I want to use the tool that worked for me so that it works, you know, so, uh, you can do that in obsidian in various way and they have Excalibur. 
and mind mapping. Maybe I should go back, but for now I'm happy with what I have. As long as it gives like a similar result, I'm uh, I'm happy with the, the way I do things. Obsidian has plugins to customize it to anyone's need, but that's some investment you gotta do. Uh, for this use case, you'd probably need to want to Excalibur a plugin. It takes code too, yeah. The amount of time required, I tried to use Obsidian a little bit and I don't know, there was something I didn't like about it. Just the, I got like confused, I didn't know where my things were. I think it might just be like an organization issue. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a personal thing at this point. I like Obsidian, but I found the lack of mobility a problem. Hmm. It's an offline solution, really awesome, but stops me from working in the several hotspots I work from. But you're already in a good flow. Yes. Uh, Obsidian doesn't feel like a good replacement to Notion for me, but I am on the lookout for something that is good as Notion, but more open. There's a mobile app, app, personally. I think my vault with GitHub. Yeah, that's that sounds like more <laughs> work. <laughs> we have to create a Xcali Godot Draw plugin. Do it! Do it, Vizio! Prosto! Hello! How you doing? Oh my god, I have too much ball. There's too many balls now. Uh, there we go. All the balls are gone. There we go. Fixed. <laughs> uh, can of course, yes, but price. And I ch I'm cheap at the moment. I'm a notioner myself. Justin, hello, how you doing? How you here? I'm here when we're working on things. We're not working, we're mainly talking so far, but we're gonna start working soon. <laughs> I say that, I've been saying that for like an hour. <laughs> Price is free though. Databases in Notion are so powerful. Yet alive, thanks. Good to know, Presto. There is a task list in the globe. <laughs> Everyone is gonna ask about that. <laughs> Maybe I should just pin it. Uh, can you pin it? Uh, Mr. Temptic, I will I will put the the link to this, or maybe not because I can't find it. Where is it? Uh, Kanban. But yes, I have a. It's a plugin basically that I use. So let me just get the plugin here. This is the plugin that I use for. Uh, this task list to have it directly in Godot and I really like it personally it helps me like get everything into place and know what I need to do for my project everything that's been released like you can see all my tasks from the past um, for me it's easy because I can take anything that's in the backlog put it in to do for like a sprint or like something similar to a sprint and then I can move it to done and then when I work on my change log or something, when I push for like a new update, I make sure that I go through all of this, write what is relevant, and then I can move all of that to released. And then I'm happy. I could even like just delete them eventually, but uh, for now I'm happy with this. <clears throat> also welcome, yeah? How you doing? For sync? Uh, I thought it was paid feature. I mean, great though. Syncs and GitHub. GitHub is free. Yeah, but that's a workaround from what I've seen, right? Uh, I mean, how you on this channel? You rename your channel? <laughs> yes, Presto. Uh, this is a guest stream, exactly. Is here in the full box. Go to official stream. Was wondering about that as well. Assuming plugin. We'll check it out. Thanks for the plugin. No problem. I always like to share tools that I use because it's uh, 
you know, like if it works for someone, it's gonna work for more people. So, if you guys also have plugins and things that you like, like I'm always happy to learn about them. Uh, I vanished to get food and I'm here. Hello, Exic. How you doing? Uh, even better. That's why I didn't pin it instantly. Uh, uh, uh. Obsidian as a GitHub, Git plugin. Can you commit related to with the task? Or the task only has a title, no description or screenshot. It only has like a title like this, but you can go in and add like a, a description here. And you can even do uh, like, like bullet point kind of thing. So there is some like usefulness uh, to it. It's a it's something that's like in development right now, I believe. So if you do want like better things for it, you 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 can always go and ask the the person that's making it. <clears throat> I just learned. I'm just, I just started learning Godot for a game I'm making whilst following tutorial. Love this app! Yes. Good job. Good job making your first game. Or making a game. Good job. Can you help me with my coding? It, it depends. <laughs> it depends on the question. <laughs> if it's not me, maybe somebody else in chat will be able to give some help. Uh, but we're gonna slowly start working. I keep saying that. <laughs> what tutorial? I have a plugin for Blockbench that exports model in Lua file in case someone needs this useless. Uh, I'm also making my first game in Godot. Go Godot! This is technically... How many games have I made in Godot? Let me check. I don't think I made that many games. I was on Unity before, but this, this is, yeah, this is my second game on Godot. So I only made one game before making this game. Uh, I did have Unity experience and Unity knowledge, which is super transferable uh, when you move from Unity to Godot. And kind of like the same going the other way. The only big difference is C-sharp. Um, but a lot of the stuff like inside the tree and how things talk to each other and all of that is very similar. And to me, that was like a, a very easy thing to switch and understand. Um, but yeah, this is basically the second game I've made in Godot. Uh, and we're gonna work on making this even better because uh, it needs to be ready for everything. <laughs> uh, what problem do you have? I'm helping my mom to build a website for her to sell knitted item. That's cool. That's super cool. I didn't like obsidian at first, but I'm a, I'm a convert, throw my vault on some cloud storage and it's good, but I suffer from I'll write that down later syndrome. And I'm not the one to ask about organizational tool. C sharp, my beloved. Yes, I do miss C sharp kind of dearly, but soon, 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 hopefully. I combine my HTML and CSS together, but it's a mess and I want to separate it, but I think I might break it. Oh no. Those transition between menu and levels is cool. Thank you. I'm thinking about adding more of them, like different one. Also like the background that I want to change. I have like a lot of stuff that I want to change, but that's like polish for later for when I actually work on the release. Um, we're still like in demo focus so that's a little bit uh, different you mean you put it in one site uh, the important thing is to constantly be adjusting your tooling uh, no better way to procrastinate 
Also, make an overlay. It's a very good way to not work on your project. It works 100% of the time. Um, and it's a it's an amazing distraction. It's fun, too. So, you know. C -sh C sharp hard. Why do people like it? It's 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 a question of experience and a question of like what you can do with it. It does have capability that keeps your code cleaner, in my opinion, and that is something that I really really like. If I can make my code cleaner, and I can make it so that when I want to refactor, it's not a big mess then I'm just happier, you know? Because like, if I try to rename something here, for example, like if I want to rename this, I need to do like find and replace, and then it finds everything that is related to this. And this is not fun. <laughs> but if you use like C sharp with like an ID, that's like not this <laughs> you can uh change stuff more intuitively and change the name of your variable change the name of your function work around things it's it, it's more fun i actually just installed vs code for godot and i haven't started using it yet but it's one of the things that I'm going to be starting doing soon, doing the transition to just doing uh, GD script in VS Code instead of working in the editor of Godot. The editor of Godot is it's OK for a certain amount of things that you need to do. But if there's like huge refactoring that you want to do, I feel like working in VS Code will be a little bit better for me. So that's on my list of things to do. Uh, I mean, I have files and I come back. OK, I'm just learning and making things. That's good. Learning and making things is the best way to learn. I think I'll instantly move to C sharp when web exporting starts working again. Same thing, Weasel. It's going to be like the, the, the exact thing that makes me uh, switch over again is the capability of putting uh, C sharp build on web. So I could extract all the CS. Okay, you're helping them. Uh, C sharp isn't much harder than Python. Can you put Java in your HTML? Doo -doo -doo. Thank you so much. I'm going to be called Bob Time. If you ever played. Forager, that's basically what I'm... Oh, Forager is a nice little game. I like it. Cool. We need more of those kind of game. C Sharp was my first language, so perhaps I'm biased. Yeah, it was also my first language, so maybe I'm also biased. <laughs> but I kind of like it. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, it forced strong typing, which allows for IntelliSense coding int, better performance, other things like Foolbox mentioned, yes. You can force type in GDScript and it helps. Like having this here when you declare a function, right? You can say like, what I'm gonna send in here is a level data. And it does help a lot to be able to like, be sure that what is going to be sent in, in there is this and there like the return is void or the return is something else. There should be a void here. Look at me not being clear about my things. Um, but when it's in an actual ID, it's like so much better, you know. Uh, the thing that convinced me to try Godot was the language is based on Python, which I love. Yeah, that's a good way to start and to do things. For sure. Um, I think C sharp isn't hard. It's just verbose. If you have an ID that helps you autocomplete, it's great. Yeah. I love OOP. Makes it more easier. Well, wait, there was a thing about OOP. I missed it. That's nah, fine. 
uh, all language are the same with different syntax. This is, in my opinion, this is very true. It's like any language that you will learn or most of the language that you will learn, you're not learning just that language. You're learning about structure. You're learning about like the best way to call your function. You're learning about pattern. You're learning all those things that in the end will be useful for any language that you use in the future. So I don't think there's like a better language. Like there's always new language that pops up that are easier to write and things like that and have more function and functionality. And that's great. But even if you have all the functionalities in the world, it does, it won't work well if you don't know how to structure your code. Right. So those that's more like experience and I'm not the best at it yet. Uh, I don't claim to be, uh, but I'm learning, you know, like you're learning, you get better structure, better code, and eventually you do something that's cool and you try things and at some point you're like, oh, wow, this is very nice and I can reuse it this way and this way. And then you, you call it progress. Uh, easier is subjective. Yes. If you can code in one language, well, you'll easily learn new language if you want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes. Oh my God. Once I get the money, I will definitely post it on steam, maybe for five bucks or something. I don't know. Nice. That's very nice. How many language do you work with? Uh, I work with GD script, a little bit of C sharp. Uh, and I know a little bit about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, but that's about it. <clears throat> I have never touched uh, GD script. Actually, I only use C sharp bullfox infinity. How are you doing? Infinity. Welcome in. A fool. Wow. You started early today and started at the same time as I normally do. How are you doing dev guy? Uh, untyped declaration warn. <laughs> Yes, I could do that, but then everything would explode. <laughs> Giorgio. Gregorio? I can't say name. How you doing? The libraries. Fully wise word. <laughs> yes, that's exactly one of my clips that uh, I explain. Just, just use any engine. Just do it. C Sharp is just like any other structured language, as long as you know to keep a clean and uh, OO code. It only starts to become a bit more complicated when you start doing inheritance and overriding stuff. Yeah, I try not to go too much with inheritance myself. I try to do composition, especially for video game, because I feel like it's more interesting and easier to understand. Inheritance can be tricky sometime. I'm interested in a new visual coding like Scratch and the one I like Blueprint that helped me and my kids learn structuring and stuff. Yeah, for sure. How many code lines did he already write in the stream? None. None, Sky. I'm too distracted by chat and I'm the kind of person, like, just in case nobody noticed yet. Um, I need to read every single message that you guys post. And I hope you're okay with that. I like the conversation. I like being here with you guys and hanging out and discussing those kind of things that I think are interesting, you know? So that's what's happening. And it's, <laughs> it's making it often so that I don't really progress with work that much, but we're all different kind of streamer. We're all kind of different kind of developer and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. I hope I get buffed out soon. I hope it get buffed out soon. It's super productive. Yes. I mean, we're talking about nice, interesting things. So 
I learned Python, then I moved to JavaScript, C Sharp, Golang, C++, GD Script, Rust. Wow. RTR Tem. That's that's a lot of languages. I don't think I will learn that many language in my lifetime. Um, I just like making games, you know? I just want to be able to make game in any language, in any engine that allows me to do that, I will do that, you know? So, you know, making UI, making things, thinking about, like, code is one thing, but also, like, thinking about, like, game design is something that is kind of, like, more interesting to me. Just, just saying, but... Yeah, so just having the tools to be able to represent what's in my head, and then I'm okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, how many fart noises did you hide in the game? What? None? That's too nerdy nerd, not fully. Exactly. Exactly. What about food? Some people are linguists. Other people just want to use language to talk. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to say it, Justin. <clears throat> Can you turn uh, untyped declaration on just to see how many warns you get? I got 40, but I barely started learning Godot. Oh, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad if I do that. It's here, right? It's in debug? No. Debugger? I keep forgetting where it is. I thought it was in the... Or editor? Editor? No. Warning? I don't remember where it is. Or is it in the project itself? Setting? Oh, it's here. GD script. Who's the silver fox? Dan, hello. One fully as... What? So all the... F <laughs> what? What are you guys talking about? I uh, guess if you turn it on in the beginning, it's fine. Redeem, be a Quebecer and rant about C sharp. Yes, I'm not gonna do that, <laughs> Sky. I can't talk French here. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm French-Canadian, by the way, so sometime on stream, people redeem me talking in Quebecer, so it's a fun time. Uh, undeclared... What is it? I just want to do it for fun. Untyped. It's, um, it's somewhere. It should be... There. I can't see it. Project setting. So the people know more than one language. This will be fun. What's your prefer engine for game making? Godot, Unity, Game Maker, other uh, policies apart. Imagine you're we're not in the Godot house. Personally, I, like I said, it's not a question of like my favorite one. They all have their advantage. They all have their disadvantages. Uh, you know, like it's a question of like understanding the tool that you use and working with that. And that's it. Uh, it's never a question of like, which one is better. Uh, it's very much just like it it's like that for anything that we, you will learn right like you will start learning a tool and then you'll find out that it doesn't do what you want in exactly the way you want and then you'll need to find a workaround this is true for anything so just choose a tool that you like at least at first glance start using it and that's it I moved to Godot for my personal project because I thought it was nicer and it's easy to like prototype on it, but I'm missing a lot of the feature from Unity that I used to use to use in Unity. So, you know, like it's a it's a trade off. <clears throat> we oui, Monsieur, yes, <laughs> Kenny. Hello, how are you doing, Kenny? 
Uh, you can you can just be afraid. What? Ice Stalker. He removed all redeem from its channel. Yes. I did think about that, Kenny. Bonjour, l'ami. Je regarde depuis la France. Bienvenue. Bienvenue, Olin. Oyenen. Bonjour, cousin. I'm doing for the reason to, because it, uh, I get so many ideas, and when I play games, I get so, uh, I get my mojo really working, and I can brainstorm so many things, but I can't make anything, and I'm trying to learn. Yeah. Really? You have your mouse over it. Oh my god. Yeah, I wasn't reading you. I wasn't reading you. Oh, it's here. Let's see. Boop. Do I need to run to see it? It's gonna be horrible. Yes, there is a lot. There is like 130. So... Oops. <coughs> See, there was a hundred and like there was two hundred and now there's only forty-two. So yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie. Uh should I build everything and code it actually later on? Build everything and code it. Uh -huh. Runs to tempt he throws him at Justin. Flashes Oh my what's happening? Just stopping by to say hi, nighty night. Ah, booyah. Welcome and bye. How you doing? A Canadian answering like a Canadian, but makes sense. Judson answered, try all, and then throws away the one that you don't like. Yeah, that's also good. Just try, like, try them all. Like, give them all a little try and see if they're a good fit for you. Like, just try making like a small project in Unity, make a small project in Godot, make a small project in Unreal. Try to understand a little bit of the workflow in each and you'll see if you like it or not, you know? So. Uh, I want to go to all at once. What's happening, Kenny? <laughs> Uh, now we have a big mass ball of people. Yes, so many balls, so many balls, so many balls. 42, oh yeah. We need to roll now, grab everything and, okay, full box. Now you need a fix warning redeem. Yes, maybe. Maybe I do. Uh, maybe I do. <laughs> uh, need to take my meds. Okay. You completely ignore me. Goes away with its dog. No! <laughs> no, Canny! By the way, if you guys don't know Canny Dev, um, the reason why this overlay is possible and is connecting to chat on Twitch is because of Canny. So... Kenny made a fantastic tool for uh, connecting to Twitch for Godot, and it's called Twitcher, and it's amazing. So if you plan at some point to make something like this crazy thing that I made here, um, give Twitcher a look, because it's very nice and it's very helpful uh, to connect to things and making sure that things are working properly. And it's not even here. Why is it not here? <laughs> I think I installed it differently. Uh, oh no, because it's in my other project. That's why. Uh, unfollow him, Kenny. No! Bibi really distracted me at the start. How some works. Thanks. No problem. Kenny. Kenny did a very good job. Yeah. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, stay focused. Stay focused, people. I can't stay focused. I have focus problems, but this is fine. All right, we're gonna try to do a little bit of prepping for the task that we wanna be sure that we put 
in the demo. I don't see VS Code there, friend. It it's it's here. VS Code. See, it's right here. I haven't started using it. I need to learn all the shortcuts first. Then, that's what's gonna happen. But soon, I will use it. Probably tomorrow. That's what we're gonna do on stream. We're gonna try to make sure that uh, we can use it properly and have fun with that. What happened? I don't know. No, it's not me. I don't know what I did, but everything on my screens everywhere is smaller. <laughs> All the text got smaller. Why? I think I did something weird, but... Uh, or it's because I'm looking at your text and my text for the chat is huge. And now everything else looks small. That's possible. Uh, Canny Dev is not here, even here anymore, because Canny feels sad for the ignorance. No! but feels blush somehow while walking with the duck. <laughs> no, Kenny! No problem, when you're someone that has problem with it, ask in GitHub or me directly and open. Yeah, Kenny also stream and they're very nice. If you have question about anything, can you use Godot a lot? And they're very, very knowledgeable about a lot of stuff and they like to share that knowledge. So it's very nice of them. Now I'm a VS Code advocate. Yes. Editor setting there. A scaling setting. I'm always at 150%. Like a good old man. Yeah. It just feels so small all of a sudden. I think it's because of chat. I put it like super big. When I see that plugin, I think someone can probably track it with OBS, Obsidian, and then have it use AI. And update git update. You should do it. That pool. If you can do that, I will use it. I promise. <laughs> oh, a raid! Thank you, Solo Code Net, for the raid. Really appreciate it. Welcome in. We're uh, getting distracted and working, kinda. It's weird. Kenny is a real MVP, yes. Rolls with all the lovely people over Yag to collect him into a crowd of awesome people. Yes. So can he working on defense against iChaos Dev? Who's iChaos Dev? Is that Irad? Uh, or the game page or whatever. Yeah. All right. So let's think about this a little bit. Um. I'm so all over the place right now. So there is things that I want to be doing for sure. This I know I want to do. So this is making the level editor more friendly. There's more, there's things I want to be sure that I can do in my level editor, right? And I want to add functionalities for the level editor to be able to create more kind of like interesting levels in multiple kind of way. And I have time until the the demo needs to have like a newer version. So I want to be sure that I implement those things properly, right? So right now, the way it works is that I can I can take different shapes, right? And I can do something like this. And I can say like this shape gets, I don't know, it gets like moved to two different places. It gets squished like this and like this, and then it gets uh, transformed like this, and then, I don't know, it gets like smaller. Is that going to do? No, that's going to do something weird. Uh, and then it goes back there, right? And now I have this uh, level with the start goal and the end goal, and I can make sure that this level works properly. So one of the thing I want to make sure is that when I do the test, which is just pressing T right now, uh, I need to make sure that these disappear, right? Because 
this is how the level are going to be loaded. I'm going to save it like this with the solution. But when I put it, when I like prepare it or make the player save file, I will make it so that these are not here, but there's a button that you can use to like see uh, hints. So having the solution already here, I'll be able to give hints to the player if they need to know, uh, if they want to know how the level can be solved. So that's one thing that I want to do to be sure to do. And it's going to be all about how I save the thing and how I load the things for the player. Um, <clears throat> doo -doo -doo. Uh, you get ready for language lesson. Good luck. Thank you, Trevron. Thanks for passing by. Thanks for passing by. Hi. Hello, Slender lads. How are you doing? But the real organic... Okay. All right. Have a nice uh, walk, Kenny. Walk, uh, enjoy the walk with your doggo. Do you have an auto-solver feature? Um, I don't have an auto-solver feature, and I don't think I want one. Because, like, it needs to... It would need to, like, test a lot of stuff. Um, or do you mean, like, having a button that would just, like, show the solution? Or is that what you mean? Because the way I'm thinking about it is that I'm going to save this as the level, right? And then this is one possible solution. There might be more solution than that, but I'm going to save this as a solution. But when the player starts the level, it's just going to be this. And then there's going to be an in system, exactly a clue system, where like kind of like this, but this is just to like explain you the rule of the game. There's going to be like a, a hint system where when you click on it, it's going to say something like the current level will be resetted and one machine will be placed randomly or something like that. And then you'll have one machine that shows up randomly somewhere that is one of those machine so it will give you like a hint on what could be one of the resolution <clears throat> will it get bigger and more complex yes it will uh eventually the puzzles and stuff like that will get way way more complex you can you can do things right now that that gets like relatively complex but i want to make them even more complex uh, with time. So like I can do something like this. Uh, mm, is it gonna work? If I could do something like this and then I do this. So it's, it's all about like how I want this to work, right? Uh, I have different machine that allow me to make like different shapes and then I can like use that in multiple different ways to create possibilities of interesting machines. Um, and it's fun, you know, like the, the whole goal is for people to also try to create their own levels <clears throat> and have fun in the process of sharing them and everything. So if I have something like this, then I can assemble them here right and then i can do something like that so now i can have a level that's just this and then you need to make this weird little plate like thing here uh and the shape of everything here is kind of weird and then you would start by just having this right so you need to plan how you want to make stuff around on the space and everything. So that's the idea. Will it get bigger and more complex? Yeah. So all dotted box, like the electric uh, or lava puzzle, or it's machine machines to do things. Yes, it's all machines that do different things. So there's some of them that expand, some of them that shrinks, some of them 
turn the color like uh, from black to white or bl white to black like it inverts the color uh, some of them slice the block into like separate three pieces so like all of that are rules that I decided on the game and then people can use that to create all kind of levels I'm also creating a lot of different levels um, but I want to see what people come up with that's like I want to see I want to give the tool to the people so that they can show me what kind of levels they're interested into. Because right now you can make weird shapes if you wanted to. And I, I kind of want to see what people come up with, you know? So this is one of the, the things that I want to test out and play around with. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh... It's a, uh, this is basically shapes, uh, but with mini puzzle rather than massive world. Yes, it is kind of like shapes, but instead of having the production focus, you have a puzzle focus. So this is kind of like the idea that I came up with with this. Uh, I like these kind of game. It reminds me of Chip Challenge. I don't know about Chip Challenge. I don't know that game actually very cool thank you reminds me of plc you guys are talking about games that i don't know <laughs> chip challenge and plc whole thing looks uh very fluid and polished already yes i've been working on it for a while if you actually are interested in trying it out there is a demo right now on steam um it's not allowing you to make levels yet but it's like a feature that I want to have in there uh, for the next version of the demo that will be presented at uh, Next Fest. So, is this literally shapes? It's not literally shapes, it's called Block Shop. <laughs> it's a different game. So, maybe you can add easy variant of level where part of the solution is missing that you need to fix. So, that's that's one of the idea that I wanna that I wanna go with with the the new level selector, right? So right now I cannot have machines that are there and that are always there, but it's one thing that I want to add. So I already worked on here custom hmm, machine visual. I already worked on having a here checkbox. So I want to have a little checkbox that's available. PLC are programmable logic chat system. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Meshing in different machine in different build cycle, different loops, and make complex object? Yes. <clears throat> so I added those little checkbox that will basically be linked to machines. So when you drop a machine, there's gonna be like a little checkbox. I don't know exactly how it will look, but I want it to be like you can lock this machine. And once it's locked, when you go from here to here, for example, like if it's this machine and it's locked, then when you test it, this machine will be there and you won't be able to delete it or move it or do anything with it. You're, you're gonna need to have this machine there. So I think this will allow more flexibility in terms of like what kind of level you want to make and it's gonna be interesting for that. And I also have this here, where I can say how many of those machines here are gonna be available for the level, right? So do you have an infinite amount? Do you have zero? Or do you have like three? So you could say like this one, you have three of this one, you have infinite of this one, and infinite of this one, and then these will appear here as the limitation you have for this specific level. So I want people to be able to like create 
almost anything that they want in terms of like the complexity of a level um and you know it's also a good tool for me to be able to like play around and see what kind of level i can come up with that's the whole goal and the whole point of this <clears throat> uh gotta run take care y'all thanks for passing by yag really appreciate it. cheers will wish list it thank you thank you so much uh, so you can make more complex machine. Uh, I have machines. Like, all of those machines are the machines that I have. I also have rotator. So I have, like, splitters, vertical, horizontal squisher, stackers, expander, shrinker, inverter that invert the color, assembler, and slicer. I also have, like, rotator that also rotates the... Um, the blocks like 90 degrees um and yeah there might be more machine eventually like teleporters and stuff like that um but yeah that's basically what i want to give to people so that they can play around as much as they want and uh yeah we'll see <laughs> it's a big kind of like experiment but uh it's a fun experiment i would say let me just do this. There we go. All the balls were in my way. <clears throat> uh, I think you need a switchable locking mode button where luck appears. Uh, yes, maybe. Yeah. So like you enter lock mode when you click on the button. And then you can click things that will be locked. Uh, I think that's a fair point. Uh, it could also be like this, but I don't know. I need to test different way of doing it and see what better visual work. Um, I also want to be able to lock these. Right, right now I have these on the side when you're designing a level. But when you're solving a level, you only have the machines that are directly like placed in the machine directly. But I would like to be able to lock these. So you would need to like lock the start point and the end point if you want them to appear in the level. But if you didn't lock them and you tested the level, they would appear here on the side, kind of like an Opus Magnum where you have like all the possible pieces that you can place and you can place them wherever you want. Cause like, I feel like that would become interesting for levels that have a weird complexity of like things placed in a weird way so that you need to decide where the end point and the start point would be in a tile that's already placed down. Um, so I want to try to play around with that idea too. That's a lot of things to work on at the same time. So that's why I need to like work on this list or task list to make sure that all of that will be possible to be done before next fest. I saw something merge two item together. Is there something to split them? Yes, this thing here allows to split things into three different things so it's like a slicer <clears throat> that slices thing into like shh. but you cannot unstack things it's like this thing stacks things on top of each other like this so like the the white the black dot gets on top of the white square but you cannot like undo this process this is like a destructible process so yeah all right so let's go here uh do, 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 do. so add a toggle for building that can't be deleted uh, should 
this be a general uh, going with what RT said uh, should this be a switchable uh, locking mode for everything so we're gonna start working on these and making sure that uh, you know we are why can't I oh because it's on a different line really oh wow okay okay uh, add possibility to move all machine in one click. That's a different thing. Um, I'm gonna remove this from here. Uh, add machine that can't be deleted. This is kind of what we need to do. Add limit on machine. This is done. Uh, so that's good. <clears throat> Maybe it was stacking that I saw then. Possibly, possibly. There was also an assembler that takes three pieces and put them side by side. So maybe that's also what you saw. Uh, so two, 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 two. building many needs to be set up in level creation. Yes. Uh, so this is something that needs to be fixed. Uh, this is something that needs to be fixed. It's basically a bug that I'm having right now. Would you consider adding an unstacking machine? Um, it would be kind of difficult because there is multiple way to make something. Let me, let me show you what I mean. Um, let me show you what I mean. Good old official, yeah. Try something, Dev. Welcome. How you doing? Two, two, two. Like a lock mode, you can just slide select things in one move that you want to lock and or unlock without needing to click lock one at a time. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. That's a fair point. <clears throat> um, so, Freelansky, to answer your question, if you look here, I have this that I can create, right? This shape, which is a horizontal line stack on top of a vertical line or the other way around, you know? Um, and then I can also make this shape by doing this. So I can put two small square side by side with the other one. So I can do the same shape two different ways. Uh, so having an unstacking thing wouldn't necessarily make sense because like how would I make the difference of like what is this versus this? It's the same piece, right? So like how do I know which one <laughs> Which one is the one that needs to be unstacked and how should it be unstacked, you know? <clears throat> How's it going? It's going well. Not gonna lie, that's a lot of balls. Yes, we do have a lot of balls. And we do have a lot of balls, but I can make them move around so it's fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> ah! Okay, let's get back here. There we go. Oh, the black hole? Oh no. Oh no! No more balls. All the balls are gone. And then they're gonna just get everywhere. You got a mini machine with two outputs? Uh, not yet. All of them have only one. Well, that's not true. 
the uh, splitter as three outputs. But that's only because like it, it send things three different ways. That's the only reason. Uh, you can undo that right example. I can undo this one. So here, this, I can use a slicer to undo this. So this is a possibility. So this is something that I've put in place. Is that a unity ball? How did that happen? <laughs> You're buried, fool. Ah, I'm buried. Oh no. I didn't notice that you can just hide out of the view screen. I can also do this. Boop. I'm hidden. Boop. And then I come back. There is a lot of ball on here. Uh, it's starting to be <laughs> a problem because it's hiding myself. Uh, it's not because I don't like you guys. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just chai, you know? <laughs> uh, yes, we do have Unity Ball, uh, Godot, because, because it's, 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 all engines are good. All engine make game, and that's fun. Uh, okay, that's cool then. I was picturing a level where you have a stack thing to get them through one conveyor, then split them up to rearrange them. But if you can use that other machine, then it's still possible. Yes, I actually have... So you're thinking of something like this, right? This is like an actual level that I designed uh, like a couple of weeks ago. And it's exactly what you say. Like you have like three blocks like that, you assemble them, you rotate the whole thing, then you deassemble them and you make them go like the other direction. So it's kind of like a thing like that. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> I like that card feature interface is a specific uh, for this project. Yes. This thing, the combat board that I'm using is specific for this project. I use it for my different project. It's nice. Make game equal good. Yes, exactly. If engine dot make game engine equal good. Yes. Oh, look at that. I don't have original thoughts. I think you do. I think you do. We're just thinking similarly. That's the only, that's the thing, you know, like we're, you know, it's great mind thinks alike. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> <coughs> it's pinned to the top. Yes, the uh, tool, this Kanban board should be pinned to the top. Uh, same wavelength. Yes, I don't see it anymore. Oh no, the pin went away. Uh, I also have this that I want to be sure that I add because I just added a save system in the uh, game and it's working very well. I didn't think it would work this well, but I do have something like that. Uh, and would you believe that my save is only 38 kilobytes? I'm pretty happy about that for the whole things and everything. Um, so yeah, but I need to make sure that I have a way to clear the save. So this needs to be added in the task of stuff that we do. Um, should you be able to delete save file only from uh, title screen or from anywhere? Because this would change the way you delete the save file. So I want to be sure that I take that into account. Uh, I want to add a save, like a name for each level. Right now they don't have a name, but I want them to have a name. Uh, so you just so you can't just move different shape on same conveyor. Not right now, RT. And the reason I decided to do that, 
to be completely honest, is for optimization. Because I want the game to eventually be on mobile. And the way I coded it originally, the... Uh, oh, I disappear when I do that. Nice. Uh, the way I coded it originally, um, every time a block goes into a machine, there is logic that is being used to transform that block into uh, whatever it needs to be transformed. But I want to change that logic so that um, there will only be a texture living in the machine and it would be calculated every time you change the path. And it will put a texture in every place and then everything will move smoothly and when they enter a machine and they get out of the machine, they will just have like a texture slapped to them and that's it. Because um, that would greatly help optimization uh, and if I want the game to be able to run properly on mobile, I need to do that. There is some refactoring and some changes that needs to be done there. Because uh, there is some slowness when you're on browser right now, sometime. And when you're on browser on your phone, it's even worse. So I need to make sure that this is not going to be a problem in the future. Uh. Maybe I need to refresh. You have original thought. They're not just the original thought of other people. <laughs> nice. It's not copying, it's recycling. Exactly. I call it inspiration. That's how I call it. Uh, on phone, pin message seems to be hidden when you're writing. Oh, interesting. Data save file, like drop progression? Yes, like be able to just like wipe your data. I want to have a button to be able to do that. I don't want people to have to like go in the app data folder, find a place, find a file, delete it. I want to have that like easily done if you want to do that. Because like if you're, you know, like if you just want to start over, I think you should be able to do it. <clears throat> so rather than the machine processing in real time they'll calculate what's going to happen every time then only ever do that exactly that's exactly how i will want to do it freelancey and it's gonna it's gonna remove a lot of the load on the system and on the the moving around and everything uh and it should be allowed it should allow it to to be way more performant uh which is <laughs> which is required right now so <clears throat> what kind of project are we doing we're go we're working on this project uh which is a puzzle game that i've been working on uh there's a demo available on steam and we're working on adding feature to make sure that we're ready for next fest in october so yeah it's a it's a whole thing <laughs> Uh, but right now I'm going through like my backlog and deciding on what makes sense to add for the six weeks that I have to be working on this. And uh, welcome, by the by the way, Oblomov, Oblomov, or do you want to Loblomov? <laughs> uh, new editor logic uh, doesn't work with existing level. Yes, this is something that needs to be fixed. And it is kind of like related to this. Uh, when, when adding, when switching level, uh, building menu gets updated only after switching to the next level. So this needs to be fixed. Uh, it's a very big one. That needs to be fixed for sure. As you wish. Okay, Oblomov. Uh, so you know how every texture would look like before machine starts. Exactly. And it would be based every time you would 
drag a new conveyor, it would recalculate the whole path of the starting point up to where you are, and it would calculate what it would look like. I could make it so that like you check if something changed on that like path so that it's easier to calculate. Um, and every time you have like a new conveyor that shows up in a section, it will recalculate that section basically. So this is what I want to try to do. Fool! What up? How are you doing, Mew Mew? Welcome in. Happy to see you here. Did you always have this many balls? That's way too many balls. There's a lot of balls. There's indeed a lot of balls. But at least we can still see the screen. We've never been at a point where we can't see the screen. So it's okay. We okay. All right. So this for now, this is not required. Wah! We also have a fine if you want to use it. I can be on fire because this is fine. Roll yourself. I want to see the spherical chaos. Sure. Wow. I can do this. <laughs> Gravity and party don't work. I deactivated them. I can only do them manually. Where am I? Whoop. There we go. Look at these fun things. There we go. We're back. I want my fish party. Oh. Oh, temptic. We we can do it when uh, we're gonna be like at the end of the stream. We can reactivate the text bubble and uh, do something like that. <clears throat> Maybe you can add some fade shader on the balls that are in your face. I could do something like that. I also thought about like having like a collider, but generally I think it's fine. Like it doesn't really matter to me it's like more of a fun thing to do and if i get to a point where there's so many chatters that there's ball like all the way over here i will be happy <laughs> you know this is fine like if i get raided by somebody that like has so many chatter that like everything explode and there's balls everywhere it's it's a win in my opinion. Chaos is, uh, chaos is great. All right. So this is a big one. This is about what I just said of changing the whole way that things are being processed. So this is a big thing that I will need to work on. Um, but right now, whoa, right now it's not necessary. I will put it there, but it's going to be like lower in priority because 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 uh bitrate goes boo yes bitrate does go boo <laughs> uh find a way to make the image okay so this can stay here this can stay here uh this can stay here it's not really important for now <clears throat> Make machine drag and droppable. I would like to do that, but I don't know how that mechanic would work. And I don't know if you people have idea about this, but I would be very interested in knowing if you guys have idea, because I've been thinking about this one. And I'm trying to keep the control simple, right? I want the control to work on PC and I want control to also work on mobile. So right now, all of the controls are kind of like one click, right? Like you have your mouse, you just click, click and drag. You 
that's the only thing you do, right? Um, but that's also kind of like the problem. So like if I had a machine like this, if I click on this one and drag, it's going to create the conveyor. But I would like to be able to move the machine too. And I don't know, like, should I have a toggle? Kind of like what, uh, I, I think it's RT that was saying something for when I want to lock thing. I could also have one that's for when I want to move thing. Double click. So double click and then you move. Maybe, maybe you could also have double click and then make a square. And then when you release, it selects everything and then you can move all of that. Huh. I didn't think about the double click. I only thought about the click and hold. Uh, left click for picking up, right click for creating. So right now, um, left click is creating a conveyor and right click is delete. So you can delete stuff if you do that. But I don't want to have too many things linked to those kind of things. Cause like if I go ahead and release the mobile version, I want all of that to be easy to do with like a tablet or on a phone or something like that. Uh, just join, didn't know that. No problem, no problem, Dr. Lauren, no problem at all. We're kind of like brainstorming a little bit, ideas and stuff like that. Does Godot as native support for double click? I think it does, doesn't it? If you go here and you go in input, you can do mouse click and then I thought it did have double click support. Or is it like uh, when you actually put it in code input dot double? Hmm. So maybe you just need to do it yourself, actually. I wasn't even sure. <clears throat> For my mobile, I think double click and or twin finger click is the for, is the best. Twin click, twin click could also be an option. Okay. Uh, let's think about that. So double click to select or create, uh, selection box and then <clears throat> twin click on mobile for same result. Hmm. <clears throat> they could just delete it, delete it and read it uh, somewhere else. Yeah, but like the problem with deleting it and then starting over is that like if you're if you have a big level, then it becomes annoying. And I don't want things to be annoying. I want things to be nice and feel good. You know, like if you're trying to make a level, you know, let me, let me show an example. Let me show an example. Uh, there is mouse button double click on event on the event. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's say I'm making a level here and then I'm like, okay, I want this to be like this and then it's gonna separate like this 
and then it's gonna assemble like this and then I'm gonna go here I'm gonna I don't know separate it like this and then this part will get bigger this one will go here and then I'm like oh I would like to go up here but I can't right so now I need to delete all that oh I can't even ah So now I need to delete all that to be able to move it, right? I would like to be able to select all of that and lower it one one case, you know? So that's why I'm thinking of having a feature like that. So maybe a select with drag. That's the thing though. Like the problem is that right now click and drag does this. It does the this directly so I need to think about a little bit what I want to do here uh, just played a mobile game last night where tapping with the second finger finger with while dragging would alter the action you were doing it's an American football game where you drag to aim your pass and the second finger turns a high pass into a low faster pass interesting and did it feel good Spew streamers? Streams? Spew? Did it feel good? That's also the question that I have. Because, like, I've never done those kind of, like, control on mobile. And I just want to make sure that they they feel, like, nice and tight. And that you feel like you're still in control. Because I did spend a lot of time for all of my control here to feel good. And I would like to keep that uh, input event mouse button okay okay but then what if it's a different press like if I have a like if I'm doing a game that's for example a, a space thing like star star fox and I use like the toggle like the the bumper button and when you press quickly two times you want to be able to roll that's not supported by default right what exactly happens if you right click the machine it deletes it deletes that's what happened uh, so maybe a, maybe a select with drag and move maybe click and hold without moving the mouse for a short time grabs the block then you can move it that's also an option that I was considering uh, so if you click and drag right away it would draw a conveyor but if you click and hold it would select it and then you could move it that's also uh, an interesting option the problem is that it can be the same on PC or at least with left right left click but I prefer double tap personally do you have undo uh, not yet it's one thing that I want to add an undo button I haven't had time to do it yet uh, so how do you delete on phone on phone there will be a button that you can click that will enable delete mode basically so I think I add like a previous version that had that uh, let me see if I can show it uh, it's like uh, in the first version of the game I had like something like that it's like a very old version so don't don't freak out it's a very very old version uh, Windows this one Pop up. So in this version, when you played, uh, there was like an erase button. So you would like make something like this and then you would select the eraser and erase thing. And that's how I wanted it to be for mobile because <clears throat> I think it's fairly easy to understand so 
Uh, I'd say either keep pressing or have a dedicated tool. Yeah, that's also an option that would be interesting. If you have a dedicated tool to select and move, that could work. What about separate menu for moving the whole area? Yeah. Yeah, that's an option. With the command pattern for undo, uh, I like the idea of click and hold. Like the longer you hold, the more the machine will fly up and be dragged. The more the machine will fly up and be dragged, the more you hold. What? I'm not sure I understand that part, Artie. Gonna start my day, enjoy your raid takeover, fool. Thank you, dev guy. Thanks for passing by. Really appreciate it. And good luck with the UI. Yes. Yes. Look at this thing. Look at how this thing was horrible in the first iteration. Oh my god. This thing. Uh, there's like nothing telling you anything there's no player feedback there's nothing this thing is a pain that's that's how you see that like things can get better it's interesting i haven't like went into like my old prototype or my old game version of this there was so many so many version of this? Oh no. What's happening? No! My mouse is not showing? What the hell? I can't find my mouse. Okay. I'm not oh, gonna open other. <laughs> that was bad. <coughs> uh. Honestly, I'm not sure. I didn't play it enough and the difficulty was too low to get me actually try different passes. I thought it was interesting though and something I hadn't seen before. And the game is free if you want to try the mechanic. It's called Retro Bowl. I will take a note of that. Just to like maybe do some research. Retro Bowl. <sighs> okay. Do, do, do. All right. So then we'll have this. Uh, then there's also the click and hold for, I don't know, X amount of time so those are like all the possibility of that's not it's it's helping <laughs> but i still haven't decided exactly off like what would be the best control so that's kind of like uh yeah it's a in suspend it's in suspense it's this in suspend thing that will fix later kind of thing but uh, you can have a visual clue that on hold something. It might be something, for example, on hold the machine will slowly levitate until it reach drag level. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, I could also have just like a circle that kind of like fills up, right? Or something so that when you click, there's like a, f a circle that start filling up that kind of like gives you a visual feedback that something will happen if you hold it until the end of the yeah that's a good idea if we decide to go with the click and hold uh let me take a note of that uh fill circle for uh visual feedback Hello, Yax. How you doing? Welcome in. Welcome in. 
Diego Am Armando Engine. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know what this means. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I only speak French and English. I. Uh, I want this, control Z, but right now it's not implemented and I don't know how much it's going to be easy. Ace Attorney reference. I don't, oh, I played Ace Attorney, but only like the first one. So maybe I didn't get it. Maybe I didn't get there. Uh... I need to implement. Uh, undo system or use the one that's like in Godot. I think there's a, there is a undo redo if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, undo redo. I've never actually looked into it too much, but I know it's possible to do something like that, like create action and then add it to the do and undo and you kind of like make it one thing or the other i haven't played with it yet but uh i think this is something i would like to try just so that but i think it's just a list or just an array that contains thing? Not even sure. But I know it would be useful in my case, so... We're gonna add that to the thing. Uh, check. Uh, undo. Redo. System in Godot. Hello, Sani Sensei. How are you doing? Undo is a big feature. It is neat that Godot supports that. Yeah, it's super useful. I didn't know it was there, so it kind of like I would have I would have liked to know it was there when I started the project. Um, but you know, it's uh, the things you learn. Because if I if I started and did it right away that would have been so different but it's always like that i learned so many things with this project there's so many things that i'm gonna do differently next time for my future projects uh there's so many of the system that i build that i'm gonna extract and make sure that they can work in any project that i put them on i want to have like a, a plugin style system that I can just slap onto any game that I want to do like kind of like game jam stuff or any other kind of game so that it speeds up my process right and makes it so that I'm sure that I have what I need um, but yeah it's all things that you learn and you grow and you get better food time be right back all right Demtik <clears throat> Don't do anything while the mod is not there. Uh, next button appear. <sighs> next button appear when uh, testing level. This needs to be fixed. It shouldn't happen. So this needs to be fixed. Uh, solve sometime happens on test level. I think I want that. But I want things to yeah um we're gonna have also a system like that we're gonna say uh rework the way levels are saved and in this we're gonna say save full level with uh solution or like player solution or uh creator 
solution, right? And then we're gonna say load level uh, by load level including uh, machines that are locked and then hi what is this task manager everyone asks about this task manager uh, it's a plugin for Godot ah, why are you so slow don't be so slow uh, it's called Kanban task to do manager and uh, it's something that I use in my project to be able to track the things that I need to do and like what is my next step uh, my sprints kind of uh, to be able to do stuff and it's a I like it it's a very nice thing to have directly in your project uh, it helps a lot to stay organized so yeah should use it too if you like it also welcome Matt's Plus Games how you doing uh, load level including machines that are lo locked um, add button to hint with uh, provided by the uh, known solution you've pinned it but seems that is not working try to configure uh, or go reply message when your previous message contains the word task Damn, Unity doesn't have this. Oh my god. Is, are we talking about something that Godot has that Unity doesn't? Wow. That's cool. Oh my god, official Godot, let's go. How you doing, cat that plays game? Welcome in. At the moment, I'm using Milanote. I don't know about Milanote. Unity doesn't have Godot. That's true. Unity doesn't have Godot. You're right. That is a that is a fact. That is a, indeed a fact. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then what do we need to in this? I'm considering Godot. I am an asset store publisher, so I don't know if there's is a place for me. Uh, I don't think there is, well, most of the plugin in Godot, well, all of them, I think, are free, right? The marketplace on Godot is free, the asset lib. So I don't know if you want to make money out of it, then it would be like something else. I don't know if there's plan for that, actually. I have no idea. I'm completely unaware of any of those things. <clears throat> doing nice man getting some free time to fiddle with Godot again how about you I'm doing pretty well we're planning uh, the next demo for next fest later in October uh, if you guys are interested I also stream can I do this yeah I stream over there the development of the game and the... no not demo project it's not my usual things so I'm not used to it. But there's a demo available on Steam if you want to try the game and leave like feedback or leave reviews and all of these things or wishlist it. Um, and it's a little puzzle game that we're working on and we're trying to like implement new things so that there's a level editor in the game that people can use and play around with and share levels. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Uh... I mean, some of the tools I make, we work on for two years, so free won't work for me. Yeah, I would assume that, yeah. There is a plan for that through W4 Games, as far as I know. But I'm not aware of any big commercial asset lib yet. Okay. Oh, well, that's, uh, okay. W4 is the company of one of the, the guy that works at Godot, 
right? I think I've seen some stuff about that on Twitter. Coffee. Cool, we'll check it out. No problem. Do you know Mindustry? Yes. Yes, I know. I know Mindustry. It is uh, one of the... There we go. Balls out of the way. There we go. It is one of the inspiration for the game. So, yeah. There is multiple uh, inspiration. There is uh, shapes. There is Opus Magnum. There is Mindustry. And there is uh, kind of like Factorio, but just like the some of the control and the visual more. So, yeah. Freedom! Hello! Were you here this whole time? Or did you just show up? How you doing? Welcome in. Uh, make... Uh, start and end goal selectable from the side if the if they aren't locked so this is also something I want to be able to do this is a lot of stuff this is starting to be a lot of stuff already and then all of these things are kind of like bugs that I need to fix uh, great we need more conveyor belt game I agree I agree I have like a, a couple of prototype ideas that I want to try I have like the weirdest ideas for game with conveyor belt and I think it's kind of interesting. I would like to maybe do a uh, a cross between conveyor belt game and um, Minesweeper. And I have kind of like some idea of how it would work, but not completely. That's why I need to test it out. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it could be interesting. Whoa. What was that? Is that a to-do list in Godot? Yes. <laughs> Everyone always just ask about that. <laughs> Howdy, partner. Hello. I've been lurking. Ha! Ah, I see, I see, I see. Bullet hell with conveyor belts. Actually, you like my industry is uh, is basically a tower defense with conveyor belt, right? So, that's kind of interesting. That's an interesting concept. I like when people come up with interesting concepts for games. Like, that's what we need. We need more interesting... What is that glove? It's because I have a tablet here. I didn't show you guys that, actually. Let me... Uh, let me show you. I don't know why I didn't show you but I have this thing here and I can do this hello how you doing uh, but yeah I can draw directly on the screen and it's also interestingly enough uh, it is a little system that I made in Godot for the overlay and uh, I can select my color, I can change the size of the thing, and all of this is being drawn with uh, line 2D. Uh, and I use that when, when I want to design something. I would, for example, here, on screen, I was like, just like going around and drawing stuff directly on my screen so that I could uh, take a screenshot afterwards and have a reference of what I wanted. So, yeah. It's a little tool that I built myself just to be able to do things. 
Like it's nice. It's a nice little things and I can show easily to people. Look at this companion ball. Isn't it amazing? But I think this ball is the most awesome. This is the awesomest ball. <clears throat> but yeah, it's a little thing that I made for myself to be able to have like a more interactive stream and that's why I need the glove. A conveyor belt game, conveyor belt game. What? Where you build conveyor belt game in your conveyor belt game. That sounds interesting. <laughs> uh, true artist. Nice. Yes, the glove. Look who it is. Cobalt. Welcome in. How you doing? Welcome in, Cobalt. In Godot, Godot ball. Command. There's command? There's so many commands. I don't know, actually. All right. So, uh, I'm getting messages. I'm getting messages. Messages. All right. So, these are the bug that I need to make sure I fix. Deleting something not part of the solution. Unsolve the level. This is interesting because I think it will be related to this. So if I do this, this might get fixed automatically. So I don't know if I actually need to move it in my to-do because this will take priority. Um, this is important. So this we're gonna do, there's like little control bug that doesn't re like re cancel stuff properly. Add fishing to your game, maybe? Hmm, maybe, maybe. I'm back inside the toolbox. You're right here, Cobalt. Look at you, look at you. And housing, and housing? You want housing in the game? <clears throat> yeah, like uh, building your own house, terrain management, farming simulator, you know, all those things. It, it, is there any game that come out these days that don't have all the feature that Stardew Valley has? I don't think so. Uh, this is not important, the bridge. Uh, I added like a machine that acts like a bridge so that you can have like things that go over each other, like conveyor belt that goes over each other. And right now it's not working properly, but I don't know if I want it in the demo. Maybe I want it in the final version of the game, but I don't think I want it in the demo, so. For now, this is this is not gonna be something I do work on. Uh, maybe a PvP mode where the faster the solver, the puzzle win. This one is a true idea. I mean, I can't set up like multiplayer. That's not <laughs> that's not a good idea, Vizio. Can you show some gameplay? Yes. Let me show you some gameplay. Uh, a flying visit, I'm afraid. But good luck with the shenanigans. Thanks for passing by, Cobalt. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, this is the game. And basically when you do... Oh, this is, well, uh, you have like these small shapes and you can like bring the conveyor to the end and then there's like multiple ones, right? Right now it's like, cause I didn't reset, but I have a save file that's still running. Uh, and yeah, like the level gets more and more complex in complexity, more complex in complexity. Yes. Uh, and then you get like 
machines that allow you to do multiple things like splitting uh, and eventually you can uh, do squishing so I could do like take this big piece and squish it like that so that it becomes like a, a piece like that and I can also squish this one so that it becomes a small square and then you continue and there's like more levels more things you can do you can like stack things on top of each other so I can have like the black stack on the white here but it's not the right way I need to do it like this instead so you know like there's like a lot of different machines to do different things to bring level and complexity slowly at least in the demo there's like not too much complexity by the end there is quite like a little bit of complexity uh, but I wanted to keep that like not too intense so that people wouldn't get afraid of the game too much uh, but yeah that's the idea um, if you like the idea or if you want to try it out like I said you can try it out here there's a demo right now on Steam and you can play it and give feedback if you have any you can join the discord there's like a couple of places you can find me uh, if you want to talk about it but uh, yeah project there you go same I like uh, this is a small bug but I probably want to fix it this is a bug that I need to fix uh, this is something I want to fix best place to find him look in any box maybe you find him there yeah maybe I'm in every box that's that's the magic of fool box I am everywhere in every box rabbit the gentle hello how you doing welcome in welcome welcome in uh, full screen is not opening on the last screen really 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 I have this bug that's a pretty big bug uh, this is a bug that's not working properly uh, this looks like a nice little game but I'm gonna nitpick and propose a feature anyway since this is already quite good from my experience puzzle game that sell well are narrated it's often overlooked but I'm confident that narration is key to success um, so you mean like narration during gameplay or you mean narration like having a story that's associate associated with the game that has narration on it i see you bought the channel <laughs> yes i bought godot channel the answer is yes i see i see uh add the buffer input yes this is important uh previous level button shouldn't be there on the first level that's like a small thing but kind of required uh what puzzle game are narrated there's a lot of puzzle game that are narrated um let me check here uh steam there was uh what's this game there's a game that's like train yeah i'm, I'm not gonna be able to find it if i just do that but there's like a, a game where there's like train track that you place that has kind of like a little narration to it uh that people seem to like and like a little animated thing um stanley parable thomas was alone that's not yeah i mean those aren't exactly this kind of thing but yeah how many lines did you write uh we're mainly doing uh prep for the kanban board so 
Not a lot of lines have been written, and that's okay, because this is not the main focus right now. Duke Nukem 3D. Hmm. Hmm. One made in Godot is Chant of Senna. Chant of Senna? What is that? Chant of... Oh, this? That's a puzzle game? I didn't know that it was a puzzle game. Oh, I guess it is. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, bro, gotta go. Dinner time. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you for passing by. Cat that plays game. Thank you so much for passing by. All right. Language oriented, but yes. I don't mean very explicit narration. It can be implicit too. But I feel like in single player game, you need uh, some kind of storytelling. It's just my impression after having a good share of game. I kind of like agree with you. I do have an idea for like story that would be like in the game. But the problem right now is I don't have budget. So writing and animating and adding stuff like that would be a little bit hard. I want what I want to do. So I do have plan to have like implicit, like you said, implicit storytelling that has no word or anything. And I, the idea would be that, um, like you're a worker in this factory that makes blocks and you would be able to see like, a employee of the month thing which would be like every kind of like world of the game like puzzle pack or something like that and then you could try to become the employee of the month and i want to have like other little puzzle hidden in the thing anyway i have some ideas but Right now, this is really not what we're focusing on, but I, I do get your point, And I think it's a very valid point that if you want something to work like that, having a little bit of a storytelling is, uh, is an interesting thing to have. Do, 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 do. I see what uh, Zoomer Boomer means. It could be as simple as actually building something relevant rather than just combining black and white clocks. Yeah. The demo looks like a puzzle game. Some kind of career mode would be neat. Uh, there are plenty of puzzle game banger that don't have story. That is also true. Like Baba is You. Baba is You kind of like as a... I feel like it has an implicit story a little bit. Like people kind of like make up the story for it so yeah uh it's totally a pure puzzle game at the moment yeah yeah can somebody in the feature make bad apple in this game <laughs> i don't think it's possible but it would be cool it would be cool uh All right, so but those are those are fair point. I do want to have some stuff like that, but at, the problem is that like the amount of time that you do things, um, do work on thing, it's not infinite, right? Like I do need to release this game at some point if I want to be able to start on the next one, and I won't know if it's a success or not before I release it. I can have like an idea with like wish list and stuff like that and all of those things. But this is my first game that I'm gonna be releasing on Steam and I'm still getting used to the whole like demo and pushing updates and understanding 
how visibility works and all of those things. For me, this project was more of an experiment and like it kind of like snowballed into something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I could continue and make it bigger and bigger and bigger still even more. Um, but there is something at some point that needs to be released, except if I find a publisher, but then that's a completely different story, right? So <clears throat> I'm eyeing around for an engine development tool for multi-platform game making, meaning iOS, Android, PC, and perhaps console. How, how well would you, uh, would you say Godot is a fit for that? Uh, I use, personally, I use Godot with uh, PC, Mac, and web. <laughs> you might have a biased audience here. Yes, that is very true. Uh, <laughs> that is very, very true. Uh, but Godot has those capability, except for the uh, console that is not out of the box, I believe. But there is uh, companies that can facilitate it, facilitate it, it for you. So it is an option. Uh, Unity Engine is also multi-platform. Yes, those two can work pretty well. Uh, cancel build mode when building past the spawner. Yes, I need to do that. Temtech, you're back. Welcome back. Don't see why it could be bias. I don't know. I don't know why. And I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. Can I, where's my thing? I can't put emotes. Oh no. Somebody put Godot's emote, the spin one in the text. <clears throat> You're back at the right time, Tentic. There is multiple company that provides console support. Prior proprietary code is hard to include in open source project. Yeah. I don't know why my screen is flickering now. It's kind of weird. There you go. That's one large to-do list. Yes. Those are all the things that I will need to do for next fest. And it's, uh, it's a lot. I meant with the backlog. You do not want to see mine. <laughs> Bring attention to machine. That's also important. We want to do that because some people get confused when there's new machine that get added, apparently. <clears throat> Who is Godot Engine? Good question. Good question. Uh, is it true that a game made in Godot and sold in Steam, there's a percentage fee for Steam, but if it's on Unity game, it's also a percentage fee for Unity? Um, yes, when you reach a certain amount of sale, I believe. Um, Steam will always take a cut, um, but Unity will take a cut only if your sales are over a certain threshold, I believe. I don't remember the amount. Uh, Unreal is the same way. And Godot is uh, free forever. So. <clears throat> uh, right, you actually work with sprints, kind of. Then it is fine to have such a long... Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it, like the, the sprint that we have right now is going to be six weeks. So we do have a lot of stuff. Who is Tobias? I don't know. The account, just the uh, community manager, but forwarding things to the rest of the team always. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is important. And then make block flow all the time i don't know if i want that that was kind of more like a test or experimentation that i wanted to try uh we'll put it as a 
design thing because I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it or not. Uh, the steam cut is fully worth it. Yeah, I think so. Our engine is free, so it would be the platform fees. Yeah. With the amount of stuff Steam provides, yes, Steam provides a lot of stuff, which is very important. Uh, that is terrifying. All right. So, yeah, I think I went through all of my things that I wanted to make sure that I would do for the game. Uh, we did have a, like a nice of like conversation on a lot of stuff. For me, it's getting close to the time where I want to go eat because I'm getting hungry. I actually uh, didn't eat yesterday <laughs> for dinner. Because I'm a I'm a Dumbo. So yeah, we're gonna check. Let me just check real quick. Uh. Oh. Sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, perhaps I should use this backlog tool to... Yes. Yes. Raid time? I think so. I think so. Yes, you are. Do not forget to follow or over, uh, the TakeOver streamer. Yes. And wishlist. Please, please do. It's very nice. Oh my god, we just got raided? Oh wow. That's like the perfect... <laughs> Hello. Hello, Rafa Lagoon. <laughs> we were raiding out. <laughs> we'll bring everyone to a nice place. <laughs> Perfect timing. But hello! <laughs> How are you doing, Rafa Lagoon? Welcome in. <laughs> uh, we can stop on the... on an amazing... Uh, let's do... Can I do this? Yeah. Let's go like this. Hi, Fullbox! Hello! I am full <laughs> I am full box the chaotic. Bit gamey is online. I was creating a worms for Twitch. A worms for Twitch? Like worms game? That's kinda cool. I like that. I like that. But very cool. So yeah. I think we're gonna be doing a very big raid. And uh, that should be nice. <laughs> Where the viewers are the worm. Nice. Let's make a small streamer happy. Yes. We found a small streamer that just started recently. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna give them some love. Make sure you, yeah, get your weapon ready. Uh, get ready to like flood, flood their chat and uh, Ask for question, ask for their project, show them some love, give them some follow. You know the drill. Uh, have some fun. If you're interested by the stuff I do, you can find me at 9 Eastern almost every day of the week. Uh, well, the work week. Um, and yeah, you can, you can follow me there and have some fun, come have some fun with my stuff and uh, all the things. Uh, and yeah, that's gonna be it for me. So let's uh, let's do this, I guess. Matt. I don't see anything over here. 